The forbidden fruit was not an apple. It was not an apple. That wasn't a forbidden fruit. It don't say apple nowhere in the Bible. It don't give you no literal fruit on that, brothers and sisters. So that was the title last night. Adam and Eve ate lies, not an apple. And that's a profound statement because a lot of people still believe that dumb lie that they was eating some apples and that's forbidden fruit they draw pictures say Adam and Eve got them biting into an apple the forbidden fruit don't have nothing to do with that like I said last night when you believe a lie that's one bad thing but also you miss the truth that you could have been getting because it does tell you they ate some fruit that we need to still be aware of to this day and it was information it was bad information simply put it was lies Hosea 10 13 said that even Israel in their day they ate the fruit of lies they ate the fruit of lies and that's what Adam and Eve ate they listened to the devil tell them they wasn't going to die if they get this information and that was a lie and we died to this day because of that so I know some people, even some brothers I know that knew what it was, they, they trying to still say it was some type of literal fruit there, but they can't tell me what kind. What kind of fruit was it? If it wasn't an apple, maybe a banana. Didn't have nothing to do with no literal fruit. They used to say banana too, by the way. Somebody might know that. They said banana before too. But it wasn't no literal fruit. They ate, it, the, the Lord named the tree. The name of the tree that he forbid them to eat from was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They weren't ready for that. Before they, in which it was talking to somebody, and before they talked to the devil, they didn't even know that they were naked. And that was okay. God, evidently, God didn't want them to know. They didn't need to know. You don't have to tell the baby the difference between being naked and having clothes on. They don't have to know the difference until that time comes. Till they run out, if they go outside naked, I guess you might have to break that news to them. But it was talking to somebody. It was getting that bad information. That's why it's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, but like Adam and Eve ate something bad spiritually, the Lord do got some guidelines that you're supposed to follow when it comes to physical eating it. And that's related to the animals that God have allowed us to consume. That's what that's related to, the animals. And it's clearly written in the Bible, but just like Adam and Eve, people do not want to obey God. And that's simply what the bottom line is. They don't want to obey God. Adam and Eve disobeyed in the garden. We all died. And then something simple like just watch the animals that you eat. He tell you which ones that you can eat and that you cannot eat. That's unclean to eat. And people want to just ignore that. Come up with an excuse. But that's the same thing that Adam and Eve came up with to eat the wrong fruit. To eat that bad fruit. They came up with an excuse and it seemed okay to them. It seemed okay. They thought it was okay. So a lot of people running around eating pork, eating catfish, eating shrimp. I used to love shrimp. I'm not going to lie to you. But once I found out the Lord didn't want to eat it, it took me a little bit. But I stopped. I didn't do it overnight. I mean, That's one of the things I tipped back and did after I read it. I was like... Did he really mean that shrimp? Uh, that was even me and Brother Dwayne. That was our late night run to what's the place, Dwayne? Lawrence's. We'd go there at 2 o'clock in the morning. I was like, nah. <laughs> but once I knew that the Lord was not playing, hey, I had to let that go. And you can do it, and it's not like you're going to starve or even lose weight by following God's dietary law. There's plenty of other meat you can eat. So that's the title of today's lesson. And the people in the Bible that knew God 
from beginning to end, they follow what God says. So that's the title of today's lesson. From Noah to Peter, none ate unclean as pork, catfish, etc. From Noah to Peter, none ate unclean. So it's, it's like, and the reason why I say that because people act like in the New Testament everything changed. They can't, they can't deny that it's written in the Bible, don't eat certain things. <clears throat> Some of them might don't know until you show it to them, but then they're going to say, well, that was back then. It changed. Just pray over it now. It's okay. That's not what the Bible telling you. It never changed. God don't change. That's why I got way back at the flood, Noah followed it. Most people don't know that because Moses gave the law. Moses came after Noah, but Moses gave the law, but even before Moses gave the law, the law was the law. People, individuals knew it. It wasn't a national thing, but the individuals who God <clears throat> dealt with, they knew what God required and how to obey him. They understood. So from Noah to Peter, none ate unclean as poor catfish, etc. Nobody they wouldn't eat unclean. Jesus didn't eat unclean stuff. Jesus didn't eat a pork. Won't nobody tell you Jesus ate some pork. I don't, tell, I don't care if it's a Catholic priest. I don't care if it's a biblical scholar. All of them will have to admit, no, Jesus didn't eat no pork. Paul didn't eat no pork. So why we think it's okay to eat it? We just special. We could eat anything. Then you're getting sick, got high blood pressure, all kind of problems, but you wonder why. Let's start off in Leviticus 20. From Noah to Peter, none ate unclean as pork, catfish, etc. See, God got some real simple stuff in here telling you how you should even eat. You got to eat food to live, but you everything is not meant to be food. It's just like you got to get some understanding. You got to eat some spiritual food, but you can't eat anything the preachers say. Because they're they telling you lies out here. The Lord said, beware of false prophets. So we don't want to consume that information with our mind and internalize it and believe it. Same thing, we don't want to consume anything with our body. It's not good for you. And the Lord know it being he created everything. And it's all good for something. It's just not good to be eaten. Swine got to be good for something. Why? Because God made it. He didn't intend for you to grab it and start eating it, though. Leviticus 20 and verse 24. Go ahead, read it, my brother. But I have said unto you, you shall inherit their land. Uh-huh. And I will give it unto you to possess. Uh-huh. To possess it. A land that floweth with milk and honey. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God, which I have separated you from other people. Now, this is what the Lord said. I gave you the land. You inherited the Canaanites. Some Hamites had it before he gave it to Israel, which they was all, they was black, just like the Israelites were black. Canaanites come from Ham. But the Lord got fed up with them and gave the land. He promised it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, you inherit that land. I will give it to you to possess it, a land flowed with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which separated you from other people. See, God's people got to be different from everybody else. If you're going to be one of God's, a part of God's family, you're not going to do what everybody else do. So I don't care if the whole world eat shrimp and pork and catfish, you're not going to do it. Go ahead. Keep reading. What verse yet? Verse 25. Read it. You shall therefore put difference between clean and beast and unclean. You shall put difference between clean beast and unclean. Go ahead. And between unclean fowls and clean. And you shall not make your soul, your souls abominable by, um, by beast or by fowl uh -huh. or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, now, which I have separated from you as unclean. Now, pay attention to that, brothers. He told you to put a difference. Now, God is talking here, by the way. God is the one talking. A lot of people try to trip this to Moses. They say, oh, that's the Mosaic law. Moses, you know, he just gave him something to do. You know, he wanted to keep him busy. That's a lie. This came from God. Moses didn't make none of this up. And we're going to see point blank that God is talking through this lesson. God said it with his own mouth, brothers and sisters, because God knows what's good among the beasts for you to eat and not to eat. Some people say, well, you don't have to eat no beast. You don't have to eat no beast. You can be a vegetarian. You can be a, even a vegan. That might be better lifestyle, but that's just not commanded by God. 
So some people debate that. Yeah, and they got statistics to say if you eat a certain way, you would definitely live long. Some people just weigh the, weigh the odds. But our main concern is that you, you don't eat nothing. God said don't eat. That's our main concern. So, but they got statistics say if you eat, if you deny yourself certain things, you probably live. You probably had five to six, seven years. And some people are like, that's all right. I won't worry about that. But the Lord gave you some laws to tell you what you definitely cannot eat if you're going to serve him because it wasn't meant to be consumed. So that's why verse 25 says, you should therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean. See, it's a difference. Some are clean, some are unclean. That has not changed. People say, no, it depends on how you cook it now. Uh-uh, that has nothing to do with it. It's inherently clean or unclean. And, and, and notice the, the end of verse 25 or the middle. Pick it up right there where it says, and you shall not make your souls. Go ahead. And you shall not make your souls abominable, uh, uh, make your souls abominable beasts. Now look, look at this, brother and sister. Ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or fowl. That's the birds. Some of them are unclean. Or by any manner of living thing. But he used the terminology abominable. That's how bad it is. Abominable. That's what you're doing when you eat unclean stuff. And people do it readily now. Like it's okay. Because they've been taught to deny what the Bible is saying. But he said, you should not make yourselves abominable by beast or by fowl or by any man of living thing which creepeth on the ground, which I, God said, have separated from you as unclean. He said as unclean. And the people who believe God from beginning to end, they followed what God said. They, they had faith in what he said. Verse 26, read that. And ye shall be holy unto me, uh -huh. for I am the Lord and I am holy. And have served you from other people that ye should be mine. Now pay attention, even following this dietary law, even constitutes a part of being holy. It shows you are living holy. You living a perfect life. You not eating the things that God already set apart and said you shouldn't eat it. It's unclean. It's going to make you abominable. No, you are living a holy life. This is a part of being holy. So how in the world are you going to have a holiness church and they're going to have catfish dinner selling in the church? They're going to have pork chop dinner selling in the church. It don't make no sense. This is holy right here. The Bible is telling you what's holy. Like, and we still got to live holy to this day. And the thing about holiness or being holy, it cannot change. It's not going to be one thing yesterday and another thing today. Because holy is holy. Holy is perfect. Holy is perfect. So he said, ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy and has severed, which means separated you from other people that you should be mine. Now let's go to Genesis 7. And we're going to get into it because the average person don't know this. That's why... The Bible is so simplistic, it go over pl plenty of people's head because they want to try to get deep in their own mind and not deal with the basics that the Bible has. So, Vince, I ran into a Gentile brother years ago. He was trying to act like he had all this wisdom and stuff, and I started telling him, and I mentioned some kind of way the dietary law came up, and he said, no, no, you know, that wasn't really something you got to do. You, you, you don't have to, you know, that was for then, like God just gave him something to do to keep busy. And he said, really, see, he gave this long and now, really, see, what the Lord was trying to do, he was really, see, it wasn't about swine. It was, you know, he wanted Moses to tell the people, stay away from really swine-like people. So I'm listening to the guy. So he tried to put it all on Moses. and some people do it. They say that's the Mosaic law. And this is what I did with him. I came back and read this in Genesis. I said, man, do you know that the dietary law didn't start with Moses? Moses gave the law wholesale to the nation of Israel, but God's word been around. Noah knew about it. 
And that guy was so dumbfounded because at first he was telling me, well, you know, see, to really get that understanding, you got to get them other books. You got to get these other books. But when I read this to him, his eyes got real big because you telling me about some other books. You don't know that what we talking about, you don't even know what's in this book. He didn't know that at the flood, and a lot of people don't know it, that it was distinguished clean and unclean animals were separated here. It was known. It was a known fact. Because most of even children sing songs about they went on the ark two by two, two by two, but not actually. So we're going to read it. And he did not know this. He was really, literally dumbfounded when I read this to him. Seven and one. Genesis 7 and 1. Read it. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Mm -hmm. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. Now first of all, the Lord is talking. Noah not making this up and telling the Lord how to take animals on the ark. The Lord is talking, and this must be serious. This is the time when God is fed up with all of mankind, and he's going to drown everybody. He's getting ready to drown everybody. But he still got rules and regulations for the ones he's going to save to follow. So he's giving these instructions to Noah, somebody who found grace in his sight. And notice what he said, of every clean beast. So obviously, he didn't even have to go into explanation to tell Noah where well, this is clean, this is unclean, blase, blase. He didn't have to do none of that. It was understood. It was already understood. That means Noah knew it. He telling them something he knows. Because everybody in the Bible who started their walk with God, God informed them on what it take to please him, what it took to please him. He informed them. So Noah knew. So don't, don't think that Moses made that stuff up about clean and unclean animals. Even though Moses was a man talked to God face to face, you shouldn't try to belittle nothing he said, but it supersedes Moses. Here it is right here. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens. So he took an abundance of clean animals. He only took two by two of the unclean animals because he wasn't going to need them for nothing else. He wasn't going to eat no pork chop on the ark. So he didn't have to worry about having extra swine because swine is unclean. He didn't have to worry about having extra unclean animals. He wasn't going to utilize them for no purpose, but he took an abundance of the clean animals. So he said, of every clean beast, I should take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and what? And of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Oh, so only the ones that's unclean he took by two. That's the ones went two by two. They need to add to that little song that the kids said, they all went on the ark two by two, two. They need to throw in some seven by sevens. Because that's what the clean animal, that's how they went on. That lets you know this was already in place and it was already important enough, brothers and sisters, for God to order the ark this way. Go ahead. Verse 3. A fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female. Oh, even of birds. Some birds you can eat and some birds you cannot eat. Some birds are clean, some are unclean. Keep reading. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Uh -huh. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. See, the Lord said, I'm going to cause it to rain 40 days and 40 nights, and I'm going to kill everything. And his purpose was to keep some alive, to save of every species at least two to reproduce. But we see other clean animals he saved more than two. He saved seven. So he made a difference there. So he said, for yes, seven days I will cause the rain upon the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and what? And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And he's destroying everything, and the only ones that's going to survive is on the ark. Now, go to Ezekiel, the fourth chapter. Ezekiel, fourth chapter. So, Obviously, this let us know what most people don't know. 
If you didn't know nothing, if you didn't know that before today, you learned something today that Noah knew about God's animal dietary law. He knew the difference between clean and unclean. He had to because he took them on the ark accordingly. No one knew about it. So even though Moses made it official and gave the law, it was known before Moses. See, God's word and his truth did not start even with Moses. It existed prior. Moses just the one that articulated and wrote everything down for God's from the beginning to his time. But now, Ezekiel 4. We're going to go up to one of the prophets. See, this is the key. Everybody that knew God, they followed the word of God. They followed God's instructions. And part of his instructions has always been watching what you eat. E Ezekiel 4 and verse 13. This when he was mad at Israel, and he promised we would go into being slaves. But he says something about it, and this is why we in the state we in today. We eat anything nowadays. One of the one of the delica delicacies for some of our people has been over the years eating some chitlins. I ain't never like that. I'm sorry. I understand when you know being from Chicago, when you little, I guess for some reason every, every kid got to go down south. During the summer, we before school start, and you not in school, you got to go down south. I would go down south. They'd be so much mess down. I was like, look, just, can I just have a syrup sandwich? <laughs> just give me a syrup sandwich. I couldn't take it. Ezekiel 4 and verse 13. Ezekiel 4 and verse 13. Go ahead, read it. And the Lord said... Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. See, and that's exactly what we're doing to this day because we messed up being able to run things the right way for God because we didn't do it. So we jumped in here, but what he had Ezekiel do is, is, is do some stuff, make some terrible food and mix it and even cook it with some dong, all kind of crazy in front of the people. So the people say, well, what? Why you do that? He said, because this is what y'all going to do. I'm going to send you into slavery, and you're going to be eating all kind of polluted stuff now. See, we knew better than to eat that in our land. But once we got kicked out, that was it. So he said, and the Lord said, even thus. So like I said, we jumped in here. He was using Ezekiel as an example to the people and the little ritual that he went through. This is what it meant to the people. This is what he was going to tell the people. And the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, which is where we at today, whither I will drive them. But notice when Ezekiel saw that and the Lord was giving him those instructions on what to do as a, because what Ezekiel was doing was a sign of this. He said, Ezekiel, he literally said, I want you to eat some mess. I want you to eat some unclean stuff just to show make a point and they're going to say wow what you doing that for because y'all going to be sent into slavery and you're going to eat all kind of unclean stuff and Ezekiel though he protested to God he was like hold on <laughs> wait a minute verse 14 read it then said I our Lord God <laughs> look at one of our Lord God <laughs> go ahead behold my soul had not been polluted he said look Lord my soul have not been polluted. Go ahead. For from my youth up even till now have what? I not eaten of that which dieth of itself. Because that was illegal. That was in the law. You don't eat an animal. You know, this is for hunters out there. If you're out there killing an animal, well, you, should, you should only bring the animals home if you're going to be righteous with God. You should only bring the animals home that you didn't shot and kill. If you walk up on an animal, you know you didn't shot and kill him. He already did. The Lord says, just leave it. Look, don't do that. Don't, don't eat that one. He allowed them to sell that one to somebody. But do not eat that animal because you don't know why I died. You didn't kill it. You could have a disease or something. You don't know why I died. So that's, that's written in the Bible. And Ezekiel knew to follow what was written in the Bible. So he said, look, <clears throat> I have not eaten. My soul have not been polluted. 
from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself or what? Or is torn in pieces. Or is torn in pieces. What? Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. So that lets you know what, brothers and sisters. Ezekiel, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, he followed the dietary law. He wasn't eating no unclean stuff. Everything that the Lord, because the Lord is the one deemed it unclean. Everything that the Lord deemed as unclean, Ezekiel followed, and he did not eat it. Even called it what we read earlier, abominable. He said, ain't no abominable flesh came into my, that's an abomination. We read where it will make you abominable by eating it. And we doing it wholesale now and wondering why we getting sick, all kind of diseases, dying young, all kind of stuff. But we don't want to follow God. And that's a symptom of bigger thing. If you can't follow, watch what you eat according to what God's standards are, you ain't going to do much that God said. But now let's go to the New Testament, to Acts 10. Because we're going to catch up with Peter now. <clears throat> See, and it was known before Noah, and it was known after Peter. I just used them as anchors to, to say from Noah to Peter. Because Paul really came after Peter, and he didn't eat nothing unclean. Nobody that knew God was eating unclean stuff. I just used them as anchors. From Noah to Peter, none ate unclean, as pork, catfish, and said. Now, we read about Noah. We know Noah knew about the dietary law. He took the animals on the ark that the average person don't even know. Seven by sevens are the clean animals. We just read about Ezekiel. He said, I ain't eat no abomin I ain't never did that to Lord. Ain't no abominable flesh. Now let's see what in Acts, because this is where they say it changed. See, that's what they lie to you and say, well, you know, it was good back then with Ezekiel and Noah. It was clean and unclean. But now all we got to do is pray over it. That's what they'll tell you. Let's see what Peter thought. Because they say when Jesus died, that just erased everything, which is another lie. But the thing is, by the time we get to Acts 10, Peter had died. I mean, Jesus had died and resurrected and went back to heaven. So if it was okay to eat unclean stuff, Peter would have known about it. He walked around with Jesus. Jesus should have told him, you know, after I die, you can eat some pork, man. It's good. <laughs> Which wouldn't make no sense, but he should have known because this is what we got nowadays. This is what everybody who want to eat anything nowadays is telling us it became okay after Jesus all that changed <laughs> okay Acts 10 and verse 9 Acts 10 and 9 read it on the morrow as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour and we gonna come back and read this so we just jumping in here we ain't even gonna get into really what it's about but I just want to show you what Peter responded in this instance. He responded like Ezekiel. Go ahead. And he became very hungry. Now he hungry. So that goes in line with what we're dealing with because we're dealing with not eating unclean stuff like pork, catfish, etc. He didn't do it. Go ahead. And would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. See, he would have ate something, but while they was fixing the food, he fell into a trance. And he don't even know what's going on. It's a lot preceded this point in this chapter, and we're going to come back and read it later to see what was all going on and what this was all about. Mm -hmm. But we just want to get his response here. Go ahead. And became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He fell into a trance. Go ahead, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit, at four corners and let down to the earth. Okay. So Peter is hungry. He was actually praying. And while they was fixing the food, he fell into a trance and went and saw a vision. And heaven opened and a great sheet came down from heaven and it got some animals on it. And people have quoted this to me when I tell them, you know, God say you can't eat certain things and that's still good you should follow that you shouldn't eat swine you shouldn't eat 
catfish, you shouldn't eat shrimp and duck and all that stuff that he did. He give you the, he give you the uh, prescription to identify what's unclean. You shouldn't eat it. People tell me, well, Peter ate some unclean stuff, and they don't even know where it is in the Bible. I had a brother work with, he used to work with me and Chris. And me and him rode home one day from work. And on the way home, we got into the Bible, because I was always waiting on that conversation to start. So we got into the Bible, and, and he's, so he already knew I was about something. So he said, so you don't eat no pork or nothing? I said, no, nah, that's against what the Bible said. He said, well, I read in church the other day that Peter, see, it, it, it don't matter in the New Testament, Peter, he ate some unclean stuff. I said, first of all, Peter didn't eat nothing unclean. It was a vision. And I said, by the way, where's that in the Bible? I don't know where it is. That's what I'm saying. People quote and listen to what they pass to say. And you don't even know where it is in the Bible. I got to show you where your response is. I said, look, go home and read Acts the 10th chapter. I told him this. I said, go home and read Acts the 10th chapter because that's where it is. What you call yourself quoting to me. It's in Acts the 10th chapter. And you come back tomorrow and you tell me if Peter actually ate anything. He came back the next day. And he admitted, he said, yep, you was right. He didn't eat nothing, but still, it's okay to eat. And I was like, oh, oh, my goodness. And I tried to explain to him. And uh, after that, he would, he would joke. He, he didn't get it. After that, he would joke. Like, we go, we, we was truck drive. We go get our trucks in the morning, load our trucks up, getting ready to leave. So we leave in, you know, the yard. It, a lot of times I see him in the morning, Israel, what you going to eat for lunch? I'm going to get me a pork chop sandwich. I'm gonna he thought he was funny until the Lord hit him upside the head with that stroke. Right. <laughs> I ain't hear nothing else from him after that. Mm -hmm. But it don't make no sense. The Lord is telling you in the Bible what's good for you to eat and good not to eat. So this is a vision that Peter had. Let's see what happened. The sheet came down. And what was on the sheet, verse, uh, read 11. And I saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet in it at four corners, and let down to the earth. And what's on the sheet, verse 12. Wherein were all manners of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creepy things, and fowls of the air. Now, wait a minute. All kind of animals on this sheet that came down. All kind of animals. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of that. I'm reading this because people have come here over the years to say that this made it okay to eat anything. And we're going to see if that's the case. Go ahead. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill, and eat. Now, that's why they say that. Because the Lord sent this sheet of animals down. Keep in mind, this is a vision. We're going to get into what the vision means a little later. But it's a vision. All these animals come down. And the Lord did say in the vision, rise, Peter, kill and eat. So that lets you know the stuff wasn't prepared food anyway. Mm -hmm. It was animals in the vision. And the, the voice come out of nowhere said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And I say this all the time, brothers and sisters. You really got to know what you stand on. You say, now, Peter was on this rooftop somewhere. He was by himself. But just say you in your living room. And the same thing happened. And you know the dietary law. Or you, it could be about anything. But all of a sudden, you see a vision of some stuff. And a voice come and tell you, hey, do so and so. And you don't even know where the voice come. You know this is some godly stuff going on. And you got enough nerve to rebuke the voice. You got to know what you're standing on. Mm -hmm. First of all, you don't even know where it come from. And you're going to say, no, I ain't doing that. That's what Peter is about to do. That shows you how much faith he had in what he was following. So the voice said to Peter, it said, verse 13, and there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Verse 14. But Peter said, no, not so, Lord. Now, you got to know what you're standing on. A voice come out of nowhere in your living room somewhere telling you to do something. You tell the word, not so, Lord. You really got to have some faith in what you believe. You got to know what you're talking about is right. You're going to tell the voice that come from, you don't even know where it come from. You know ain't nobody there. First of all, you might faint. Like, who, who is that? 
But then you got enough nerve to say, to respond negatively. That's what he did. Not so, Lord. And he recognized this is a voice evidently from the Lord. Not so, Lord. Why? For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. I have never eaten anything that's common or unclean. Sound like Peter was still abiding by God's law. Following the animals that you eat and don't eat. Sound like he was still abiding by it. And matter of fact, they try to use this to say it changed, but actually they say when Jesus died, it changed. So if when Jesus died and resurrected, if it changed, Peter should have known better about it, Acts 10. He should be like, oh, that's right, Jesus said we can eat anything, not just pray over it. But you know what? Jesus didn't say that. That was never given by the Lord. So he rebuked the voice. And the reason why, and we're going to get back to find out why the voice would even tell him to do that in the first place being that we know is wrong because he was getting his attention about a whole nother matter, another matter. But now we'll get back here later. Let's go to Leviticus 11. Let's see why Peter was standing strong on what he knew. See where he got it from. Point blank. I'm talking about directly from the horse's mouth. The Lord himself told us what animals we should eat and shouldn't eat, brothers and sisters. This ain't nothing Moses came up, not even Noah. God said it out his mouth. Leviticus 11 and we will start at verse 1. Leviticus 11 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Now he said, look, first of all, we always point out who doing the talking. Because people say, well, that's the Mosaic law. No, that's the Lord's law. Right. Verse 1 said, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. God is talking to some men, telling them what to tell the people how to live. How to live holy, by the way. Speak unto, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying unto them, speak unto the children of Israel, saying what? Whatsoever part of the hook. Start at 2 again. Okay. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. These are the ones that you shall eat among all the beasts that are on earth. Now keep in mind, God is talking here. There used to be a commercial back in the day. Young people ain't going to know what I'm talking about. There used to be a commercial say, when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. Well, when God speaks, you definitely should listen. God is the one talking. He said, tell the people these are the beasts that you should eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. And then he's going to get into what you can't eat. So he's still leaving you a great amount of beasts you can eat. It ain't like you're going to starve. That's why, you know, I played around with vegetarian, but I know I ain't got a beard, so that don't work too good for me. <laughs> I tried it for a minute. I'm like, uh-uh. Because I know I can eat, you know, the cow. I know I can eat a burger. And when I went vegetarian, I saw how much I missed eating it. That lasted about three weeks. But go ahead. These are the ones he said you can eat, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven-footed and chewed the cud among the beasts, that shall you eat. See, so it got to have the characteristics. It's set up where all you got to do is understand, look at the animal. It have to have a parted hoof be cloven footed and it have to chew the cud among the beasts those are ones you can eat but it have to have the total package it can't have one and not the other verse 4 nevertheless these shall ye not eat of all of them that chew the cud or of them that divided the hood oh so now he said see this shows you how specific God will get he said now these are the ones you cannot eat <clears throat> because they might have one characteristic, but they don't have, they don't have the whole package. So this is what he's telling you here. So God is going through a whole lot of detail, a whole lot of explanation for something that's not important and don't matter, like people make it now that just pray over. Why he couldn't say just pray over it back here? Right. Prayer, would they pray back here? Why he couldn't say it back then? It don't make no sense. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud 
or of them that divide the hoof as what? As the camel. As the camel. I don't see people really standing in line to eat that either. As the camel. Some things is just common sense, but other things people want to stretch a little bit. And it depends on where you live at. Just like I know if a mouse ran around here right now, this place is empty out, especially all the sisters. <laughs> They'd be gone. But some places in other countries, people be trying to get it to eat it. Because some people somewhere eat mouse. They eat the mouse. And the Bible warned you of that. So it depends on what environment you're in. But God covered all environments. This is clean, this is unclean. So he said the camel, because what again? Because he chewed the cud. Now he do chew the cud, which is a which is a one of the characteristics to the cud. That means he's not just eating anything all the time, eating all kind of garbage. He actually chew the cud. But go ahead. But divide him, not the hoof. But he don't have a split hoof. He don't divide the hoof, so what? He is unclean unto you. He is unclean unto you. That's what, now the Lord is talking here, brother and sister. Moses didn't say this. God is telling that he's informing Moses. Moses probably knew some of it because, again, it go back. We saw Noah understood, but still God is the one laying it out for his people. Go ahead, verse 5. And the cooney. Because he chewed the cud, but the bite of not the hoof mm -hmm. is unclean unto you. And, and the hair. Go because ahead. Because he chewed the cud. All but type the, of, they got different families of rabbits and all of this stuff. But he telling you, and the hair. Go ahead. Because he chewed the cud, but the bite of not the hoof, he is unclean unto and you. And this might even be uh, in the horse family still. But still, he telling you it's unclean. Now he get to the one everybody would accept though it was above. Mm -hmm. But you get to verse 7, this is where everybody going to have a problem. They going to faint on this one. Verse 7, what does it say? And the swine. And the swine. Everybody love this nowadays. Go ahead. Though he divided the hoof and be cloven footed. So he got the opposite. He divided the hoof. Got a split hoof. Cloven footed, but what don't he do? Yet he cheweth not the cud. Yet he cheweth not the cud. He chew everything else, but he don't chew the cud. That's why it's not good for you to eat. But the Lord know. Even if we don't understand all that, some people go into all the details and you know where this how they do this and it's, it clean up the earth and it's going to make you sick. It really wouldn't matter to me. All I know is the Lord said it's unclean, don't eat it. But you find out it's some reasons why he did say that. And the swine, he though he divided the hoof, be clothed for it, yet he chewed not the cud. He is unclean unto you. Read verse 8. Of their flesh you shall not eat. Of their flesh shall you not eat. See, that's a direct statement, brothers and sisters. It's not an innuendo where you got to assume maybe you shouldn't eat it. No, it's unclean. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. That's why I said to people before, because people try to use these little twisty scripts in the New Testament, say it's okay, just pray. We're gonna read it like we're gonna read, go back to read what happened with Peter. That's one of the ones they like to twist. They like to twist what Paul said in Romans 14. We're gonna read that. They like to twist what he said in 1 Timothy 4. We're gonna read that. But none of them say, Now you can eat swine, it's cleaned up. None of them not gonna say that. So what it is, they reading that into that, saying it's okay to eat it now. But this is how I would need to, to see it. If it was going to be okay, I need to see I need to see my name on it, actually. I need to see Elijah, swine is okay, you can eat it now, thus said the Lord. And you ain't going to find that. But that's what he said. Read it again. Of their flesh shall ye not touch, shall you not eat, uh -huh. and their carcasses shall ye not touch. They are unclean. To See, you. even the carcass is one that says dead. See, it got purpose. It, the swine has purpose. But once it's dead, that's when it becomes unclean, and you shouldn't eat it. As Even though somebody had to touch it, that wasn't everybody's job. It made you unclean. Go ahead. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Now we go into the waters. It got characteristics, too, of what you can eat. Go ahead. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters and the and in the seas and in the rivers, 
them shall ye eat. See, it got to have fins and scales, brothers and sisters. Got to have, and it got to have a whole package like the, the land-dwelling animals. Got to have both, fins and scales. Some might have one, but not the other. Go ahead. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, all of them that move in the waters, and any th living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Not just unclean. He went even a little stronger than that. They shall be an abomination to you. This is what he's saying about the, the fish that you shouldn't eat. Like catfish is one of them. It don't have a whole package. It got fins, but it don't have scales. Or one of the other. I'm pretty sure that's it. It don't have a whole package. Shrimp that I used to love. It don't have a whole package. So it's an abomination. Go ahead, verse 11. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Uh-huh. You shall not eat of their flesh. Point blank. You shall not eat of their flesh. God is speaking. Go ahead. But you shall have their carcasses in abomination. Yeah, because they're going to be around. We got brothers that go fishing around here. Sometimes they catch one. Hey, they, they just throw it back. Well, they throw some clean ones back because they got they put, we got professional fishers around here. They only like the high-grade fish. But definitely the unclean ones, nobody that know the Lord not going to keep those. But you still then got it on your hook. So they still will be in the oceans. So that's why he said you shall have their carcasses in abomination. If one of them die, it's around you. It's not too much you can do about that, but you still don't have to eat it. Go ahead, verse 12. What, whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. Again, he keep using that strong line. It shall be an abomination to you. That's the way we should look at catfish, shrimp, all of that stuff that's in the waters. Let's skip down to verse 20 because he even got fowls of the air, which are birds. He got it all, but we can't read it all. But we just know that he instructed on, some, on what we can eat and can't eat among the animals. Verse 20, go ahead. All fowls that creep going up all up upon all fours uh -huh. shall be an abomination unto you. Now all fowls that creep going upon all fours shall be an abomination. So you got some of the ones that can fly a little bit, but they be creeping on all fours like ducks or whatever. They, you can't eat them. Go ahead. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creepy thing that goeth upon all four. Now, though, he give you some exceptions, though. And notice some of the exceptions we don't even want to mess with. Because that's not common practice for us to eat. Go ahead. Which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Uh-huh, what? Even these of them ye may eat. Mm -hmm. The locusts after his kind. See, the locusts, don't nobody want to mess with that. You be like, nah, that's all right. And you don't have to eat it either. You don't have to eat it. But if you get in a crunch, you know you can crunch. <laughs> it will be crunching. And I bet you would too. Don't nobody want. But somebody in the Bible, one of the greatest prophets ever ate them. John the Baptist. That's what it said. That's what it said he ate. He ate locusts and honey. So, but it's unclear. You don't got no example of no serving a God in the Bible eating a pork chop though. See, he ate locusts. It's unclean. That sounds strange to us. But hey, it's okay with God. I had a brother, I saw yesterday, Brother Joshua live in Baltimore and he teach at our Philly class and in New York sometime. He actually went to a restaurant, I think he said yesterday and ate some grasshopper. Tacos. He said it wasn't bad. Y'all like, uh, <laughs> but that's clean. He, he getting ready to tell you that. Keep going. And the bald locust after his kind. And now even the bald locust. So if you don't like, a, you want to get you a little specialty in the locust family, get you a bald locust. But it's plenty of stuff you can eat, brothers and sisters. You're not gonna go starving at all if you avoid the stuff that God is telling you. Obviously, for good reason. That's unclean. So he said, these are the ones you can eat. The locusts out this kind and the bald locusts out this kind. What else? 
and the beetle after his kind. And the beetle after his kind. Go ahead. And the grasshopper after his kind. And the grasshopper after his kind. You can eat it. It's okay. And I bet you will. You get hungry enough. You slap some on that grasshopper in a minute. <laughs> but go ahead. 23. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. See, God is going through too much detail mm -hmm. for this not to be important, brothers and sisters. He dedicating a whole chapter to this because he want to let his people know, don't, don't eat and do what everybody else is doing in the world. You, I, I created everything. I know what's good for you to eat and not eat. I, I ain't trying to restrict you where you can't eat nothing. I'm telling you what's good for you to avoid. All the other creeping things which have four feet shall be, there go that word again, an abomination unto you. Skip down now to verse 42, and we're going to wrap this chapter up. Verse 42. Go ahead. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever go upon all fours, or whatsoever that hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth. See, this whole chapter talking about this. Much details. We can't even get into all of it. Go ahead. Uh, them ye shall not eat, mm -hmm. for they are an abomination. There go that word again, abomination. Go ahead. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing. See, you're not supposed to make yourself abominable with this stuff that the Lord deemed as abominable and unclean. Go ahead. That creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. See, now, so when you get to Romans, we're going to get to Romans 14, Paul is talking general, not even dealing with the dietary law whatsoever because he kept it. He's talking general about, you know, people that come up with things. Nothing is unclean of itself. That's not dealing with the dietary law. That's stuff that we come up with. Like sometimes people will say again that it's good if you don't eat no meat, you know. So people can debate that all day long, and that's fine and well, but it's not a sin to eat the meat that God said is clean. It's not a sin to do it. So that's the key. And it's not a sin to eat no meat. It's not a sin to be vegan. People that say they vegan, they feel better. Hey, they don't feel dragged down. Hey, so that's okay to do it if that's what you want to do. But Paul is talking general stuff like that, not the dietary law where God has ordained certain animals unclean forbidden, abominable to eat. You can't change that. He wasn't trying to change that either. So just keep in mind that God called this stuff an abomination. He said in verse 43, ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them that should that you that ye should be defiled thereby. This defiled. We're going to go to Matthew 15 in a minute. And Jesus was saying stuff to go in don't defile you, but he wasn't talking about this because this already said defile you. And Jesus wasn't contradicting what he said in the Old Testament. He wasn't contradicting. He was dealing with the, the, the question at hand, what they were saying, just generally speaking. So, you know, you have kids playing around. Kids that ate marbles, just playing. That's not unclean per se. That's probably not the best thing you want to be putting in your mouth, but kids will do that kind of stuff. But that's not something that's unclean to do, and it's going to come out. The marble going to come out. That's the stuff Jesus was dealing with. But he wasn't dealing with this here because this is unclean. It makes you unclean. It defiles you. I'm pointing all this stuff out before we get to it because people twist these other places and add in what they want to add in. Go ahead. Keep reading now. Verse 44. Uh-huh. For I am the Lord your God. Now, this is God talking. He said, I'm the Lord your God. I, I, I'm the boss around here, and I'm telling you what's right. Go ahead. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Told you this is a part of being holy. So you can't have a holiness church. See, every, you got holiness church around here. They done done away with the holy days. They done done away with the holy dietary laws. They done done away with what God is saying is holy. Today is a holy day, the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week. You can't change it. So he's telling you, God is telling you, I'm the Lord your God. 
you need to sanctify yourself and be holy, for I am holy, neither what? Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. This is God talking. Go ahead. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. to be your God. Ye shall be, you should therefore be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Keep going. This is the law of the beast. Now this is it. This is the law of the beast. Go ahead. And of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Uh-huh. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. To make a difference between the clean and unclean. Preachers won't do this nowadays, but the Lord already had it done in the Bible. They won't read this kind of stuff. Go ahead. And between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. God gave you a law and it never changed because God don't change. Let's go to Matthew 15 now. To the New Testament. This is where it gets kind of hairy and people try to start inserting their own belief. But they don't pay attention. You have to take it out of context to make it go against the grain on what God has already told you. That's not what it's talking about. If Jesus was talking about eating some swine and said, no, nah, that don't defile you no more, I could go with it. But that wasn't even the conversation at hand right here. But this is what people like to read into. Matthew 15 and verse 1. See, when you don't know the Bible, you'll go for stuff like this. Pay attention to what this is about. We're going to read through it and know what they talking about. 15 and 1. Go ahead. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, uh -huh. Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So now, these, these Pharisees, these were the religious leaders of Jesus' day. The big shots running the church. They came to Jesus and scribes and Pharisees and asked him a question. Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Why they break it out tradition that we have, which is, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So understand, brothers and sisters, that's what this is about. We can't put it in here. They didn't say, because they eating swine, because Jesus was, who eating swine? We got to, he would have had to address that. Because none of them, but see, that wasn't even a question on the table. That wasn't even up for debate. Won't nobody in their right mind tell you that Jesus ever ate swine, because that means he sinned, because it's a sin to break the law. Won't nobody tell you that none of the apostles, even the people talking to Jesus that was half crazy, the Pharisees, none of them wasn't eating no swine. That was like unheard of. That wasn't even on the radar. That wasn't on the, on the table for discussion. But they did have this tradition that they bringing up. What are they bringing up? Why are your disciples eating with unwashing hands? We ain't talking about eating no particular food. We talking about they have made up a law saying you got to go through these washes before you eat. Hey, if your hands real dirty, it'd probably be good for you to wash your hands. But it's no sin to not wash your hands and put some food in your mouth. That is not a sin. You know that happened all the time. I know if some wives in here be slapping their husband's hand. Don't eat that food. Well, go wash your hand on them. But it's no sin to do it. And they, they made it into a, a religious law. So, and they, they were so strong on it, they even asked Jesus about it. Why they breaking it? What did Jesus say, by the way? Verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? See, they got tradition, but Jesus said, I'm about the commandment of God. Now, we just read the commandment of God. We just read the law about clean and unclean animals. What you can eat and what you can't eat to make a difference. So you think Jesus didn't uphold that? Jesus is upholding the commandments of God. So they worried about some man-made tradition. Like people ask us, why you don't celebrate Christmas? I had people ask, you don't even believe in Jesus, huh? That's so sad. Yeah, I do believe in Jesus. But that's a tradition of man. Don't have nothing to do with him. So why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders while they wash not their hands when they eat bread? Jesus said, why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? And he gave them an example, verse 4. For God commanded, saying, 
honor thy father and thy mother, uh -huh. and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. Mm -hmm. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by mine, uh -huh. by me, mm -hmm. and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Go ahead. Thus have ye ma have made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. See, Jesus turned it around on them. He said, look, you worried about tradition instead of the commandments of God. He said, matter of fact, this is a clear-cut example. You got a tradition to get you out of keeping God's commandments. And believe it or not, that's what we got with this lesson. We got tradition. We are talking commandments of God that came out of God's mouth, but people got some excuse that has become tradition to get out. Just pray over it. The Lord knows, you know, you can just, if you just, you cook it different now. That's why they couldn't eat it back then. None of that's in the Bible. That's just what you're saying now. But God said what he said, and he haven't changed it. So that's what he gave them about one of God's even ten commandments. Honor the mother and father. They had tradition to get around that. If I take care of my mother and father, I curse them out, do what I want to, because they live with me. You know, some people do mistreat their parents when they come live with them later on. They mistreat them, talk crazy to them. Look, it don't matter if you do take care of them, you still have to honor them. It don't matter. You should be willing to take care of them, especially if they took care of you all your life. You should be willing to take care of them. Right. <clears throat> I even had my father. My father, he wasn't around in my life. But when he got in the bind, I let him come. Hey, you can come stay with me. And I wasn't talking crazy to him. So that don't change the law of God. So that's what Jesus hit him with, the commandments of God, how they break it by their tradition. But I'm reading all of this because people jump from here. This little scenario to say we can eat anything now, and that ain't even came up in this conversation yet. Go ahead. What verse yet? Verse 7. Verse 7. Read it. Ye hypocrites. Jesus called them hypocrites. Go ahead. Well, the Isaiah prophesied of you saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, uh -huh. and honor me with their lips. But what? But their heart is far from me. Their heart, their mind, don't have a clue what God want. But they praise and worship in him, but they don't know him. And what? But in vain they do worship me. And they worshiping me in vain. It's for nothing. They wasting their time, really. Go ahead. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Because they doctrines that they believe in. Their belief system is based on man-made commandments. What man tell you? They don't want to obey God. That's back to this lesson. This is a simple commandment, but it's important enough for God to give it to you with his own mouth, saying to obey. And it's not that hard when you make your mind up. Once you make your mind, you say, this ain't... This wasn't nothing. I don't know why I hadn't been done doing this. There's not nothing to change. Say you're going to eat clean according to what the Bible say. It's not a big deal when because you're not going to starve. It's not going to hurt you whatsoever, really. It's going to be good for you in the end. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So now, this is where people fall off the wagon at. They said, no. Nah, Jesus said it's okay. So they take a statement here, so we're going to skip to it at verse 15 to save time. But we know how it started, and Jesus is going to refresh our memory if you forgot. Go ahead. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, ye, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do you not do not ye understand that whatsoever entereth at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the drought? Uh huh. But those things which I'm sorry, I'm gonna throw this in here. I'm gonna read this because this is what they like to read too. Before you even get to that, mm -hmm. uh, verse uh, verse. Just go ahead, and read verse ten and eleven. I should have just kept reading. Go ahead. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defiles the man. Okay, so they read that in a minute. They read that. They, they, they just want to use that verse right there to throw away all of Leviticus, everything we read about anything concerning the dietary law, because they said, Jesus said, not that which goeth into the mouth defile a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. So that means anything, that I can put anything in my mouth, not paying attention that he's 
dealing with an issue with these Pharisees about eating with unwashing hands. So, and again, brothers and sisters, you don't have to spell everything out every time to people that understand already. It's no need for Jesus to say, well, you know I don't mean swine. Because they know he didn't mean swine. Like everybody here that know the word, that know me, I can say I'm having a party this evening. I'm not, now don't come back. <laughs> I can say I'm having a party this evening. I'm going to have all kind of food, whatever you want to eat. You name it, it's going to be there. With it. That would automatically exclude unclean food. You, I wouldn't have to say, you know I ain't going to have no swine now. It's understood. So this is where people fall off the wagon. At. They insert their imagination here, and they get, they making something out of this that was never intended and that nobody on the scene listening to this conversation was even thinking about. They weren't even thinking about, you, it's okay to eat swine now. That wasn't on nobody's radar. But now, let's go to it. Verse, uh, verse 15, and we're going to see. Read that again. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Now, Peter, now pay attention, take note, make a note, understand that Peter was right there as Jesus is addressing this eating with unwashing hands dilemma. Peter is right there. And the issue is eating with unwashing hands. Jesus blew on the Pharisees and made them feel hurt a little bit because he rejected their little tradition because he didn't he didn't he didn't cow down to them saying why your disciples eat with unwashing hands because God never said that God never gave that law but this is what it's about so it really shook Peter and them because Peter and the other disciples they were used to following this for the most part they respected the Pharisee so they like look Jesus Peter said declare unto this this parable Concerning this, you know, unwashing hands thing. Verse 16. And Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding? Now he told him, are you yet without understanding? Let me explain it again. 17. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever enter in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? And that's true. Whatever go in and come out the drought, just like a kid eat a marble, that's not a wise thing to be doing, but kids will swallow some of the darndest things. And adults too. It eventually come out, and nobody's ever said that was a sin. So it's going to come out. And what is Jesus addressing? He's addressing the fact of eating with unwashing hands, not eating any type of food, let alone stuff that God deemed as unclean. So he said, don't you know whatever go in the belly is going to come out? Go ahead, verse uh, 18. But those things which proceeded out of the mouth come forth from the heart. Uh-huh. And they defile the man. That's what defile the man when you go against what God say. Go ahead. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts. Out of the heart Murders. proceeded evil thoughts. That's where it all started. Go ahead. Murders. What else? Adulteries. Uh-huh. Fornication. Go ahead. Thefts. Fault witnesses. Blasphemy. These are the things which defile the man. These are what defile a man. Go ahead. But to eat with unwashing hands defile not a man. Well, he didn't say to eat swine don't defile a man. Did That's what they want to put in here. I know they wish it was in here, but it's not. It will never be in here because that wasn't on the table for discussion. He summed it up. He said, but to eat with unwashing hands, that defile not a man. That's all it was about, brothers and sisters. Wasn't about nothing else. It was about eating with unwashing hands. So you can't take that and make something else. And the funny thing about it <clears throat> is the same people. This shows you how hypocritical you can be as we run over here to uh, back to Acts 10. Back to Acts 10. Show you how hypocritical people can be, brothers and sisters. The same people that saying it's okay to eat some pork. It's okay. Just pray over it. Eat catfish. Because what go in the mouth don't defile you. But then these same people say, well, smoking and drinking is a sin. Wait a minute, why you can't pray over that? <laughs> and that's bad. I don't smoke or drink, but that's bad because that's not a sin. It's not in the Bible that smoking, thou should not smoke or drink. That's not in the Bible. Overindulging in anything is a sin, but that's not in the Bible. But that's what people will make up their own law on that. You can't smoke and you can't drink. Wait a minute, you just said what go in, don't defile me. 
And that really would fit that case because God never had no law against it. But to eat swine defile you because God already told you in advance it defile you. But now, back to Acts 10, and let's listen to Peter again. But now we're going to see what it's about, and we're going to already know. We already know that Peter didn't eat nothing unclean, which tells you something about Matthew 15. Peter was with Jesus. You mean to tell me Peter was with Jesus with that unwashing hand situation? And Peter did not walk away from that situation thinking he can eat anything? Of course not. Because he's going to tell you he never done it. This is years later. I'm talking about many years later. 15, 20 years later, Peter still obeying the dietary law. He didn't get the understanding that people getting from Matthew 15 that we can, you know, eat anything because what go in don't defile you. Now, if it's already told you it's unclean, it already, it, it do defile you. That's automatically. Go ahead, Acts 10 and 1, read it. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, uh -huh. a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Okay, so this is what this is about. It's about Cornelius, this Italian brother. And he was, he was not an Israelite, as some of my Israelite brothers say. He was a full-fledged Italian, because that's the issue here. That's why he got to have this vision. Other than that, you wouldn't need this vision. So it's telling you he was an Italian, but he was seeking the God of Israel, and God of Israel going to recognize that. But see, the brothers say he was an Israelite because they don't want to make it possible that other people outside of Israel can hear the word. They, they want to act like the word is only for Israel, which is ludicrous. All through the Old Testament, the Lord made room for strangers, non-Israelites. So this Cornelius, this, it said he was an Italian band, a devout man that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. That means to Israel, because Israel always been poor for a long time. So he was trying to help Israel out and prayed to God always. Verse 3. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him uh -huh. and saying unto him, Cornelius. And he, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Go ahead. And now send men to Joppa and call for one that, uh, for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Uh -huh. He is lodged with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou art to do. So the angel came to Cornelius and said, look, you send for Peter, he going to preach to you. The angel didn't preach to him because the Lord worked through Israel. So the angel told Cornelius, this Italian, you, you catch up with Peter. He going he gonna to tell you what you need to do. Go ahead. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departing, mm -hmm. he called two of his household servants. That's what Cornelius did. Go ahead. And devout, uh, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Uh -huh. And when he had declared all these things unto, him, unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Go ahead. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, and drew nigh unto the city, mm -hmm. Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Go ahead. And he became very hungry. Now this is what we had read early, so we already know the story, but now we got the backstory to know what's really going on, mm -hmm. and this is the purpose of the vision. It's all about Cornelius. This is why Peter uh, is getting this vision about the sheet and that. It has nothing to do with changing God's dietary law, and we're going to see that. Go ahead. And he became very hungry uh -huh. and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance uh -huh. and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet in it at the four corners and let down to the earth. Right. Go right. ahead. So we read this, but we're going to go over it again and then we're going to see the end of it. Go ahead. Where were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Go ahead. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter. 
kill and eat. Uh -huh. What's his reply? Now the voice told him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. He wasn't about to do all that anyway. It was just a vision, and he's not going to eat nothing. Like I told the brother on my job, he didn't eat anything. Go ahead. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Peter replied to a voice out of nowhere coming from heaven telling him to do something. He said, uh-uh, Lord. That shows you he stood on the dietary law. Not so, Lord. I have never done it, and I'm not getting ready to do it today. That's like Ezekiel rebutted. He was like, ah, oh, Lord, I ain't never eaten. Abominable flesh ain't came into my mouth. And the Lord wasn't trying to get Peter to eat nothing here, brother. So he trying to get his attention about Cornelius because that was a big thing, a big step for Israel to go preach to another nation, a Gentile. Go ahead, keep reading. Verse 15. Mm-hmm. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. See, we didn't read this early, but I knew we was coming back. What? What God hath cleansed, that called not thou common. What God hath cleansed, that called not thou common. Now, they might say, they have said, well, see, he cleaned up the pork. Now, brother, he cleaned it up. We can eat it. We can eat the catfish. We can eat it because God didn't clean up. Look, it has nothing to do with that. That's not what this story is about. It's an analogy. It's a parable, so to speak. But it did say what God have cleansed, that called not thou common. Go ahead, let's see what he cleansing. Go ahead. This was done thrice. Now it happened three times. That means that cycle repeated itself, told Peter, okay, rise and eat. Peter still said, uh-uh. Because it wasn't nothing to eat anyway, it was a vision, but Peter wasn't giving in. And then what? This was done thrice and what? And the vessel was received up again into heaven. So obviously, like I said, you don't, Peter didn't eat nothing. That wasn't even there for that purpose. It was to get his attention about Cornelius, the Italian, sending people to call for him so he can come preach to him. That's all it was. So he didn't eat now. Like the brother on my job actually said, see, Peter ate some stuff, some stuff came down. He ate. I said, brother, you don't even know what that is in the Bible. And he didn't eat nothing. Go home and read it. So the vessel went back into heaven. Go ahead. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision was of which he had seen. He didn't jump to, to the me. conclusion he can go get him a pork chop sandwich later. He didn't jump to that, did he? No. Go ahead. He doubted. He wondered, what the heck the Lord trying to tell me? Go ahead. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry uh -huh. of Simon's house. Right where he wondering and doubting, the men showed up, knocking on.
where they didn't deal with other nations like that. They dealt with, uh, with uh, other lost Israelites, with, uh, with other Israelites. They didn't deal with other nations like that. So he said it's an unlawful thing. He said, you know this, that it's an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep coming or come unto one of another nation. But I'm going to tell you something, what? But God had showed me. God had showed me something. And he's talking about that vision. That's how he got it. God had showed me what? That I should not call any man common or unclean. That I should not call any man common or unclean. Absolutely nothing to do with catfish and swine and we could eat anything now. That's just added into that. That's people putting their own idea into a story that's 2,000 years old. And they wasn't even thinking about that. Peter wasn't thinking about eating no pork. He never ate no pork. He said it with his own mouth leading up to this and he didn't leave this situation start eating no pork. Like everybody want to do now. So the point, the real point is, if all the people in the Bible, from Noah, Ezekiel, Peter, even Jesus, Paul, if they follow God's dietary law, what's, what's wrong with us doing it? Especially when you just look at Jesus. We're supposed to be like Christ. If he did it, why wouldn't we do it? It's not going to hurt you. That's what I'm saying. People not even using common sense. Let's go to uh, Romans 14. This is a a favorite. See, we read in a place that people like to use to try to erase it. You can't erase the word of God, though. God spoke this with his mouth. I, if, I, if I'm going to eat it, I need to see it point blank like God said, don't eat it. I need to see him say eat it. And he's not going to say that because he don't contradict himself. 14 and 1, read it. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation. Go ahead. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth earth. Uh -huh. So now this, see, people come here, they say, brother, see, it's, it depends on you. Whatever you want to eat, again, I'm going to say it again, the dietary law was not in question here. It was not on the table for debate. That wasn't even a topic of conversation. It had nothing to do with God's dietary law. That was understood. Paul wasn't debating whether somebody can eat swine or not. That was already understood they wasn't doing it. So what is, what, is, what is up for discussion then? Stuff like whether you want to be a vegetarian or not. That's a choice factor. I ain't going to get mad at you if you be vegan and you shouldn't get mad at me if I eat a hamburger. Right. We shouldn't even argue about that. Because neither one of us are offending God. And somebody might feel like, look, I... I can't eat no meat, uh, you know. It's, it's just better for me not to eat. That's okay. That's their stance on it. That's fine. I'm not going to argue because they don't have to eat meat either. So I'm not going to say, you know you can eat meat. The Lord said you eat meat. Come on, come on, eat the, eat the meat, bro. <laughs> Look, it's okay. They don't have to eat it. They're not sinning by not eating it. That's the key. And this is what he's dealing with, stuff like that. Him that is weak in the faith receive you, but not to doubt for disputation. For one believe that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eat it herbs. They just want to be a vegetarian. But again, it ain't got nothing to do with the dietary. A lot of people want to read that into this. He ain't talking about no swine and catfish or none of that. Go ahead, verse 3. Let him that eateth despise. Let, him, let not him. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. So I'm not going to be mad at you if you vegan. More power would tell you. I just don't have that strength right now. But go ahead. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. See, and if you vegan or vegetarian, don't judge me because I'm eating a hamburger or something that God and said is okay to eat because I'm not sinning. But he ain't got to deal with the dietary law. It's just in general terms. Skip to verse 14. Uh, you ready to finish three? No. Go finish three. For God hath received him. For God hath received him. That's right. Skip to verse 14, 9. Go ahead. Because he get in the days. Because that's, that's one thing we're going to read in a minute, how the Catholics had a day where they said you shouldn't eat no meat on this day. Look, that's okay for an individual, but see, they started some man-made tradition as an organization. But if I say I'm going to fast every Tuesday, if I say that I'm going to fast, I'm not going to eat nothing, every Tuesday. That's okay for me to say. I can't put that on you and make you do it. But it's nothing wrong with me doing it. 
That's what he was doing. Whosoever esteem it today and all that. We don't have time to read all of this, though. Skip down to 14 and go ahead. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So now that wouldn't... <laughs> That wouldn't erase what God said a swine is unclean, don't eat it. That wouldn't change that. Again, that wouldn't even up for debate, brothers and sisters. But if you take this out of context and try to make it reverse what's in Leviticus, you have yourself a problem. That's not what he's talking about. But in general terms, stuff that we ain't talking about stuff that God said is sinful. We're talking about stuff that's general. So now nah, nothing is unclean of itself. So a hamburger is, is not unclean of itself, but if somebody feel like that's going to make them sick, I can't eat no more cow, I can't eat it, then that's up to them. That's okay. Go ahead. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest not thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. That's right. Let not then your good be evil uh, evil spoken of. Go ahead. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, mm -hmm. but righteousness and peace mm -hmm. and joy in the, uh, in the Holy Ghost. That's right. See, they can take this and try to apply it to the dietary law. But I'm telling you, dietary law ain't even up for debate here. It's just in general terms. So, again, if you don't want to eat no meat, that's fine. I'm not going to force it on you. But now if you eat some swine, I'm going to tell you you're sinning against God because I can read that in the Bible. But that's all it is. Skip down to verse 21, and he's going to tell you really what he's been saying. Go ahead. 21. Mm -hmm. It is good neither to eat flesh. It is good to eat, to eat, not to eat flesh. It is good neither to eat flesh. See, notice he said flesh, period. Because he's talking about a meat eater, obviously clean, because that's the only thing they would eat, versus a non-meat eater. Even somebody drink wine versus somebody don't, don't want to drink wine. It's okay, you're not sinning, but it's okay if you abstain. I abstain from drinking. I can't tell nobody else to drink some little wine that they're sinning, though. But for me, I had my share already. And you know what that means. <laughs> but go ahead. 21. It is good. Uh, it is good neither to eat flesh, uh -huh. nor to drink wine, uh -huh. nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended, or is made weak. Right, if it's going to hurt my brother for me to do that in front of him and make him weak, then I can avoid doing Again, none of this has anything to do with what we read about the dietary law. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 4. This was the real favorite for people to come to usurp God's Old Testament dietary law. They did change. Again, Peter kept the dietary law with his own mouth, he told us. Paul kept it too. All of them kept it because they was Israelites and the Israelites were that sanctified people who didn't do those things. And these are things that's easy to do. They might have been doing some killing and adultery, but hey, they was, they was raised on not eating no pork, so that was like second nature. That, that wasn't even nothing to question. Where we at uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Go ahead, read it. Now the Spirit speaking speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith uh -huh. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of death. See this is serious stuff and this will show you how people are twist the word of God. Paul is telling you about some dangerous stuff coming on the scene and we gonna deduce it to God's dietary law which is an insult to God really. It's a slap in God's face if you deduce what Paul is saying to say it's about God's dietary law. you really calling God a devil. People don't know what they're doing. I'm saying this because people come here and say it's okay, according to this, to eat pork, just pray over it because of these few verses right here. But they never start at the top. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you what they do. Skip down to verse uh, five, 4 and just read 4 right quick. Then we're going to back up and read what it's about. But they like to come in and get, get the one verse out of here. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, go ahead. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Go ahead. Five. For, for, for it is sanctified by the word of, of God and praise. See, believe it or not, that's where they got just pray over that, brothers and sisters. And they, so they take this out of context. Again, they just stretching the scriptures a mile long. 
What did it say? Verse 4 said, And every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with that gift. So oh, they run, they run with that one. They said, Brother, he said every creature is good and we can eat it. Then he said it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer. So that's where they get just pray over that. But the thing of it is, again, you don't have to keep repeating yourself when it's certain things understood. If I say I'm going to have a party, I ain't got to say it won't be no swine there. Paul didn't have to say except swine and stuff as far as eating because that was understood and that's not what he's dealing with. See, we want to make this about God's dietary law. So they want to take this verse and say, so he's saying it's okay for me to eat pork. No, let's back up and see what he is saying. Now start at one and let's see what this is really about. Because not only is it bad to believe that lie that it's okay to eat pork and swine, but you miss the truth that he warning you about some false religion out here is what it's really about. Four and one, read it again. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times a some shall depart from the faith. And do what? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of death. So that's what this is about. First and foremost, brothers and sisters, this is some serious stuff. People are going to depart from the faith. He got a warning that in the latter days, people would depart from the faith, give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. That cannot be me, in this case, telling people you should keep God's dietary law. Do that make any sense at all? No, sir. This is what people are trying to say. That couldn't be me. I'm telling people you should not eat swine because I can read that in the Bible. We read it out the Bible. I'm telling people you shouldn't eat. If it don't have fins and scales, you shouldn't eat it. God said that. How you going to turn that into seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? People that lost their mind. They better let that pork go. That pork driving them crazy. <laughs> you calling God a devil if you take that stance from these verses. Because this is what he's saying. He said, look, listen what he said again. He said, now the Spirit speaking of Christ said, in the latter time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Keep reading. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Go ahead. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They can't, you can't tell these people nothing. But what are they doing? What are they lying about? What are they saying we need to do or not do? Verse 3. Forbidding to marry. Oh, there go one of the doctrines of devils. Forbidding to marry. Go ahead. And commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Oh, and the other example of what they doing, doctrine of a devil, is commanding to abstain from meats. You can't say this is me when I'm just reading God's dietary law, what God said. You calling God a devil and saying what he said out of his mouth is a doctrine of a devil. You should be very afraid. Yes, sir. You shouldn't do that. That's ludicrous. No, you making up a lie so you can eat some pork and you missing the point that God is telling you through Paul, a false religion coming along telling you not only you can't eat meat period that's what they saying he didn't say clean and unclean did he nope. he said commanded to abstain from meat but also forbidding to marry and they got priests that forbid to marry and they got doctors about you can't eat meat no meat at times that's what he's dealing with go ahead and finish that now verse 4 mm -hmm. for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving that's right so I ain't got to follow no meatless law, period. Go ahead. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Okay, that's good. Let's look at some of the articles now right quick. And we're going to go through it quickly. On the first side, you got an example. Well, you got an encyclopedia last two million years at the top. The, the place with the, uh, that's a, where they said Catholics weigh in on meatless fry. This is, this is an article the Catholic part is from the uh, Chicago Sun-Times years ago. So, but this history take you all the way back to ancient times, because this stuff been going on a long time. See, Paul said it was going to happen, 
So it had to come about sometime after him. So we want to start at the top where it said growth of the monasteries. I read it. Growth of the monasteries. In every country, the Pope, now this is like I said, last two million years, page 217. We got that history book up here. It's, it's, in, it's in there. You can read that out of there if you think we, we lying to you. In every country, the popes had another powerful and dedicated instrument, the monasteries. The notion of withdrawal from world to escape from its vices and seek salvation through self-denial and even physical agony was very old. St. Simeon Stylites, 390 to 459, set a standard for victory over the flesh when he spent 35 years on top of a pillow 60 feet high in Telenesia. That boy was crazy. Near Antioch in Turkey. Nobody told him to do that. But the monks, as well as withdrawing from the world, also returned to it. Their energies renewed by prayer and meditation to carry out the work of Christ. Monasticism in the West owed its shape largely to one man of vigor and command, Benedict, 480 to 543, a nursier, the modern Narcia in Umbria, northeast of Rome. He had been so outraged by what he saw as the vice and corruption of Rome that he spent three years as a hermit in a cave at Subco in the wild hill country of Latinum to the east of Rome. The fame his piety brought him disciples and he moved to Monte Cassina. There he set up a monastery on the site of ancient temple Apollo and monastery which still survives despite having been destroyed on five occasions the last by Allied bombs in 1944. So this is, in, this is years ago. So this is, you know, over 15, 1,500 years ago. That shows you how far this stuff go back, but we're going to get to it. So in, in 529, Benedict drew up his rule or regular, which was gradually adopted by most monasteries in the West. The regular required that monks take vows of poverty. So that means you can't try to be trying to make no money. <clears throat> Some of these preachers need to do this nowadays instead of talking about a, uh, prosperity. Vows of poverty, chastity. You know what chastity means? That means they taking a vow not to be married, not to deal with a wife. So he said vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And their monastery is organized as a family under the abbot. The word comes from the Greek word abbot, meaning father. Life in the 6th and 7th century, monasteries were severe but not harsh, being divided between sleeping, working, and praying. The monks had a pound of bread, two cooked dishes, and a measure of wine each day. They even drank a little wine, which is okay. But notice what the end of that sentence said. Though eating meat was what? Forbidden. forbidden. Eating meat was forbidden. Who forbid them to eat meat? God didn't. God said you can eat certain meats. See, this is what Paul was telling you. People would depart from the faith. And he put it in there point blank. And he didn't put it by himself. He said forbidding to marry. That's where the chastity come in. And commanding to abstain from meats, which God already said you can eat. God didn't say we can eat some meat. See, again, brothers, First Timothy has nothing to do with God's dietary law. It has to do with false religion twisting things up later on. And we know we still got it today because they still go by the chastity thing saying uh, the priest can't have a wife, right? They got what they call a celibacy, right? You can't get married to this day. It ain't like it's hidden. <clears throat> it's still that way. He point them out, bold faith. Somebody say, well, you just talking about them. Look, the Bible got to be talking about somebody. It's, and the old saying is true. If the shoe fits, wear it. They wearing it. Because they forbidden to marry priests, not just even priests, even some of the women that want to dedicate themselves to the Lord, they cannot have a husband. So what you do, you sneak around and fornicate, you sneak around and play with boys and mess everything up. That's a, this is why this is a doctrine of a devil. Because it's creating more harm than good. See, it seemed like, oh, that's so pious. They won't get married. They so dedicated to God. Look, God ain't never required that. You, as the kids say nowadays, you're doing too much. You need to just settle down, let the priest get a wife where they won't be playing with boys, and let the women get a husband. 
This is what we're talking about. Read that again. I'm going to read this so you understand how serious it is. He, read verse 1 again. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, they departed from the faith, but they got some religion going on still. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Again, what's the doctrine of a devil? Jump to verse 3 and see. Forbidding to marry. That's, number, that's one. That's a doctrine of a devil. Number two is what? And commanding to abstain from meat. And commanding to abstain from meat. They fit both of them, don't they? Yes, sir. Has nothing to do with saying you can eat pork, nah, nah, nah. You missed the whole message. You missed what the Lord trying to show you about some false religion in front of your face that you don't need to follow. So there it is. So that's why he said they had to take vows of chastity and they couldn't eat eating meat was forbid but not bring it down to our days but this is re this is old article this is 1997 Chicago Sun Times article and they was talking about doing the meatless thing because they, they didn't got away some from the meatless thing but they still didn't had it like on Friday or like doing Lent so they hadn't totally eradicated where you still see the residue of it so Catholics weigh in on meatless Fridays. And this is, uh, like I said, Chicago Sun-Times. It says by Ernest Tucker. I'm at the top right. For, for one 86-year-old Roman Catholic in the loop on Wednesday, the possibility of a return to meatless Fridays conjures up memories of his mother's special German egg pancake. See, this is why nowadays, see, they came up with one thing lead to another a lot of times. The Catholics start this meatless Fridays thing. Then they some somebody said, "Well, you know, is fish okay?" They were like, "Well, fish ain't quite me." They came up with some excuse, so fish became okay. So that's why nowadays fish is normal to have for food on Friday. The Catholics didn't really say that, but that's what people took and ran with it since they said fish was okay. Okay, we can't have no meat on Friday. Let's just have some fish. So every institution now have fish on Friday. I went to grammar school. I ain't know why they always have fish on Friday. You go everywhere, they have fish on Friday because they said that was allowable as opposed to no meat on Friday. In some kind of way, they threw fish in another cat. You know, they can't do wrong, right? So they messed that up. But that's what it was. <clears throat> so we're not going to read all of that. We're going to skip to the second page of this where it says... Uh, continued on previous page, Catholics, Larson Downstate Oswego. He said, I don't think enough people in this modern day know what self-control, self-denial are all about, Larson said as he left St. Peter's Church in the loop. Before Pope, pay attention to this, before Pope Paul VI eased the meatless obligation in 1966. See, that's when officially the whole Catholic Church they kind of just la got laxed on it. Before that, it was straight law that you had to avoid meat on Fridays. Again, I just need to see the Bible verse on that. There's not one. I see a verse that warned me that people would come up with this type of stuff, but I don't see no verse saying we can't have no meat on a particular day. So before Paul Pope Paul VI eased the meatless obligation in 1960. Larson said, Friday meals were special growing up in a Catholic fam family of 10 on a farm near Aurora. And they go on and on and on. Uh, so that's good. You can read the rest of that on y'all. But flip over to the other side because I wanted to bring something because that was old. That was over 20, 22 years ago. Of course, the history book is ancient. But I wanted to bring it up to nowadays because they're still talking about this. So this is from the Irish Catholic, and this was actually February of this year, February 7, 2019. It's kind of light, but it's under calls for Friday fast to be reintroduced. Reintroducing, uh, so I'm reading under the picture, with whatever that food is, where the cross and all that stuff. Reintroducing meat-free Fridays will help Christian spirituality and the environment according to a monk and a professor. 
the Friday, and this is, it varies in different countries, so it's say the Friday fast, talking about fast for me, was changed in 1983 after a decree from the Irish bishops which stated Catholics could fulfill Friday penance by abstaining from alcohol, smoking meat, or some food by making a special effort at family prayer, all that stuff. So again, this is this year they're talking about it. So they still, so a lot of people miss it. They want it to come back. They grew up on it. But the thing is, this is what the Bible is telling us about. Now let's wrap this up. So none of that changes God's dietary law, brothers and sisters. None of that changes that. Nobody that knew the Lord ate swine and catfish and shrimp and all that. They followed that. But nobody that knew the Lord went for this meatless and celibacy stuff. Proverbs 28, 9, because people want to say pray over it. <clears throat> so I want to read this about praying over it. 28, 9, read it. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayers shall be an abomination. So now if you reject what the law is saying, and that's the law where God said, I give you the law of clean animals versus unclean, laws on what you should eat, animals that you can eat and that you can't eat. If you reject that and talk about praying over some pork or praying over something, the Lord don't want to hear it. So this is serious business. And this verse transcends timelines and generations. You can't say, well, that was way back then. You know why you can't say that? Because people still praying and the Bible still got this law here. So if you turn your ear today, if you turn your ear away from hearing God's law, he's saying your prayer is an abomination. That's something else. Now let's go to Isaiah 65. We're almost done. <clears throat> Isaiah 65 and 1. 65 and 1. Just to put a little icing on the cake to show you this is something God not playing with. He don't like it at all. He used the term abomination repeatedly. Six, Isaiah 65 and 1. Read it. I am sought of them that ask not for me. Uh -huh. I am found of them that sought me not. Go ahead. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. Go ahead. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people Go which ahead. walketh in a way that it was not good after their own thoughts. Uh -huh. And people that have provoked me to anger continually to my face. Go ahead. That sacrifices in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Go ahead. Where which remain among which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh mm -hmm. and broth of abominable things are in their vessels. Notice he said they do all of this stuff to my face. This is when you go into church, you praying to God. He said, if you turn your ear from the law, your prayer is abomination. So I don't care what you think, what you heard about eating pork, this don't sound like it's in a good light. At all. Sound like God is totally against it. He said they eat. These church people, they remain among the graves. They lodge in monuments which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things. Is in their vessel. Please tell me what you put in your vessel, you know, it defiles you smoking and drinking. Look, I'd rather be smoking and drinking, which I don't do, than eating some swine. Because God said, don't do that. Yes, sir. I'd rather put that in my vessel because God never said it was a sin to do it. That's what he said. They eat swine's flesh and broth of the abominable things is in their vessel. So, you know, you can't even have some people stop eating pork. Even it was a brother years ago, he, he said he didn't eat no pork, but he get the ham hawk and put it on his plate. He said, like, look, what you doing with that? What's that about? Well, you know, there was, we was in the storefront in Chicago. One of, one of Brother Bowie's old friends, he had ham, I was like, dude, you can't have a ham hawk on your plate. Well, I don't eat it. You know, I just get the, you know, it's the juices, dude. <laughs> Dude, it's broth of abominable stuff. Okay, Isaiah 66. I'll uh, read verse 5. I'm sorry, read it, read it. Which say, stand by thyself. And that's a shame. You got some people that made they self, made up their own regulation for holy and sanctified. They will say they eating pork, but they're going to tell you they holy. And they say, I'm holier than you, which they stand by yourself. 
Now you eating pork and you gonna condemn somebody else. Go ahead. Would say, stand by thyself. Uh -huh. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. I am holier than thou. The Lord don't like these people. What he say? They are. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. That irritate the Lord if you going against his law and claiming to be holy. Because his law, even his dietary law, is part of the criteria for living holy. We read that. He said, be ye holy my holy. Don't eat this stuff. Isaiah 66, next chapter over. We're going to take it to the end. We're going to show you that Jesus coming back, he's going to deal with people. Because I heard comedians, a lot of people make jokes because they think this is, you know, fun and games and you know, it don't mean much, you know, because it's get, the truth getting out here now, so we out here preaching, so people want to come back with, so you mean God going to burn me for eating pork? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because, again, and it's probably not just going to be the pork, and I am figuring if that was your only problem, you probably would stop that. But that's just a symptom. If you can't stop something little like pork, you ain't going to stop nothing else you want to do. You ain't gonna obey God, period. You can't do something little like that. Your mind is not geared toward obeying God. Isaiah 66 and 15, what'd he say? For behold, the Lord will come with the fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Now we're gonna see this is Jesus, by the way. But let's see some of the stuff Jesus is inquiring about or interested about when he come back to judge the world. The Lord is gonna come with fire. With his chariots, like a whirlwind, to do what? To render his anger with fury. With fury and what? And his rebuke with flames of fire. With flames of fire. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. He going to plead, deal with all flesh. He coming in flame and fire. This is Jesus. We're going to see it. We're going to read it from the New Testament standpoint. Because some people say, well, that's the Old Testament. I say, okay, we go to the New Testament for you. By fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. But let's see some of the many. What they doing? Why they getting slain by the Lord? 17. They that sanctified themselves. Oh, you holy and sanctified of your own accord. So they that sanctify themselves, go ahead. And purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree. Doing what? Uh-huh. Eating swine's flesh. Eating swine's flesh. See, that's a symptom of your issue. Eating swine's flesh. Go ahead. And the abomination. And the abomination. Stuff he already repeatedly said is an abomination. Don't eat it. What else? I told you some people eat this. What? And the mouse. And the mouse. See, some... Some of us in here, we be like, ugh, the mouse. But that's how you should be with the swine. Ugh, the swine, oh. pork. That's how you should feel about it because it's all in the same category. It's abominable. But the Lord is going to deal with everybody that's doing it. And the abominate, he said, those, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, an abomination. And the mouse, what's going to happen to them? She'll be consumed together, saith the Lord. Shall be consumed together. He mentioned specifically eating swine. He said he's going to consume you. So even if I was on the fence with it, I'd be like, I ain't taking no chances. I'm done with it. That's why I let the shrimp go. I was like, I love shrimp. I was like, I will get me some little chicken wings and put some hot sauce on them. <laughs> and get some crackers if I want to reminisce. I ain't taking no chance with no shrimp. Second Thessalonians 1. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 1. It's going to repeat just to let you know Isaiah 66 was none other than Jesus, and it's going to tell you the same result, but we got the specifics of what the problem is. Eat swine flesh and other abominable stuff. That's a symptom of people's illness nowadays. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. The, the illness is you don't want to obey God, period. Going back to Adam and Eve, when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They thought they had an excuse to do it. Oh, you know God just playing. You know, you know he wouldn't get you for that. He know you're going to be like God. Look, you're going to die still. 
Same thing here. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6, and this is it. Go ahead. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulations to them that trouble you. Uh-huh. And to you who are troubled. See, we don't have to worry about people doing us wrong, doing us in. God going to get them back. He said vengeance is his, so we don't have to try to get nobody back. Seeing it's a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, what should you do if you're being troubled by anybody right now? To you who are troubled, what? Rest with us. Be patient. Go ahead. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. How is he going to be revealed from heaven? Go ahead. With his mighty angels. With his mighty angels. How? In flame and fire. In flame and fire. This is Isaiah 66 all over. Go ahead. Taking vengeance on them that know not God. Uh-huh. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Taking vengeance on them that obey not God and that obey not the gospel. They won't obey. And we saw specifically some of the things they won't obey. They won't even keep the dietary law. They won't even change that. And it's the preacher's fault because they didn't lie to people to make them think it's okay. Only thing they want people to do is bring them some tithe money, which is a shame. But he take advantage on them that obey, not, that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. See, swine ain't worth it. Catfish not worth it. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. He gonna have a regular announcement. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your DVD or CD up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other study classes, question and answer Bible study every Wednesday night at uh, 7 p.m. via conference call line at 860-970-0010, ID number 343-531-334, and also stream live from via our website at thykingdomcome7.com. Children's Bible classes, ages 4 through 12 every Sabbath at noon, Teen Forum Bible class, ages 13 through 19 every other Sabbath, Saturday at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptism list at the podium and speak with Brother Levi. Follow, the, the following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight-fitting or over, overly baggish or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all hair coverings and shorts are not permissible. Women should have a head covering such as hats or scarves according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 1-7. through 7. If your young child becomes noisy during the lesson, distract the other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitoring area and the uh, lunchroom of the school. Any tithe offerings or period offerings should be put in the offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. And until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. Okay, I'm going to ask you to pray for uh, other places we're working on. We're trying to get a new place in Philly. We've been looking forever. Philly is a different animal. I thought L.A. was bad. L.A., everything just high as heck. Everything high. They got plenty of stuff available, but it's just all high. So the Lord brought us to a decent place for the time being where we could work out there in L.A. without paying an arm and a leg. So Philly a little different. It, it's, they don't have much, period. It's tight. It's not much property, so that makes it even higher. The stuff they do have is high, but it's just not. It's hard to find land with even with parking out there and you have to have parking you're going to have like a bible class we got a pretty good amount of members out there you need some type of parking so but we got to move we at the 12th hour on moving from this location where we at so keep praying for us on that and uh some of the other stuff we're trying to do we're going to move in atlanta we're going to move and uh try to open up a new spot in oakland so pray for that that the lord give us some uh direction on it if nothing else we're going to stand and face the rules and close out. We got a Q&A, probably 4.30, 5 o'clock, there about question and answer here today. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever. Praise the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy shall endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. And his mercy shall endure forever. In Jesus name we pray. The King of Kings, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the, Lord of Lords. the Mighty One of Jacob, the Mighty One of Jacob, and the Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.